Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, Crystal once again. And um, I just wanted to put this disclaimer out there. I'm getting ready to touch on a subject that's, you know, very touchy, especially for, um, you know, around this, you know, day and time. And that is the subject of body count. And so, you know, just putting this little disclaimer out here. If you feel like you're a little sensitive on this subject or you're not, you know, ready, you know, then, well, you know, you can just go on and skip this video. But um, I just want to just, you know, speak on it just for my opinion, something that's probably going to get me, something that'll probably, you know, cancel me, something that people that's not going to agree with, you know, something that, a subject that many people are not going to agree with, but I'm just going to go ahead and speak on it anyway. Okay, for those of you who, you know, most of you are pretty much my older audience who may not understand what the term body count means, all body count means is like uh, a number of people that you slept with in a lifetime, and, um, you know, it's one that people glorify these days. You know, if you see it on, you know, different reality shows like Love and Hip Hop and um, just in the conversations of people today, you know, they praise and glorify body count. And I've heard on several, you know, you know, several clips from podcasts and things that you see on social media or your YouTube. And they say, you know, well, the more people, I, you know, the more people I've been with, that means I have experience. You know, that means, you know. I'm going to know what to do when I get the um, person, you know, maybe somebody they're going to marry or somebody they're going to stay committed to for the rest of their lives. You know, I don't know what to do when things like that. And, you know, I just believe that couldn't be farther from the truth. You may know what to do sexually as far as, you know, all the things and tricks that you played on other people. And this is both for men and for women, you know, with this whole body count thing. But you don't know, like, with this person that you get married to marry, you know, what worked on this person is not going to work on this one that you're about to be committed to for the rest of your life. You know, what worked for them may not work for, um, what worked for one person may not work for this one that you're about to um, love or feel like you want to be committed to. And so it's just a very selfish way of looking at things. And it's just like, you know, I just think it's like, it's, it's selfish because it's like, it brings in, first of all, the spirit of comparison which shouldn't even, like, be in the first place. But, you know, when people, you know, just fall prey to the flesh and sin and things like that, then that's where the problem, you know, shows up. And then people want to just justify the sin and justify, you know, being with multiple people, thinking that that's, you know, a good thing. And it's really a sad thing because body count, I'm telling you, the name of this video is going to be Body Count Ain't Cute. And it's just not, I'm sorry, it's not, you know. I was with one person myself and that was enough for me. That was one bad experience in and of itself and I didn't care for that. And this was like, you know, many years ago and stuff. But still like, you know, it's just not a good thing. Soul ties are real, y'all. You know, I know about it personally because, you know, I hooked up with this gentleman and things like that and had a three-year heartbreak that I was dealing with after I got finished with him and decided to call it quits and just couldn't get over it. It's, you know, soul ties are real. You get caught up with a person and things like that, and then they don't, you know, they act all funny and different with you and, you know, just break your heart. And, you know, you breaking your own heart because you went against your own morals and things like that. So, you know, I had to get to a place where I had to forgive myself and, you know, forgive him. And just, you know, just, you know, heal. I had to heal. You know, it's just, that's why I say, like, people who praise body count, you know, it's just from my own personal experience, that one, you know, that one time, you know, many times with that one person was still, like, you know, it wasn't just, it just wasn't a good thing. I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like the way I felt and things like that. So I can only imagine how, people are with, you know, multiple sexual partners. And it's just like, it's just not, it's not a good thing. You know, the spirit of comparison, you just start to, um, you know, because that kind of stuff, when you get married one day, that affects you if you don't heal from it and, you know, truly repent from it. You know, that affects you one day when you get married or you get in that, you know, you get married, you know, I promote marriage, you know. And then you'll find yourself comparing, you know, sexual acts that you did with one person 
and you're trying to do that with your spouse, and your spouse is like, no, I don't like that. I don't want that. We'll work with Bobby. It's not going to work with Michael. You know, we'll work with um, the, Rakesha. It's not going to work with Mary, you know. And it's just, it's just not, a, it's not a good thing with this whole thing. And sexual immorality and promiscuity, you know, this is the stuff that the Bible talks against in First Corinthians 6. And I'll get into reading that, you know, part of that verse. And it's just not a God. And I'm so nervous talking about this because, like I said, it's a touchy subject that many people don't, just don't want to hear about. But, you know, it's the truth. Like, you know, God, he... He didn't create us for that. He didn't create us to have multiple partners and things like that. You know, when God, you know, gave Adam Eve, he gave Adam just Eve. He didn't give her, he didn't give him Eve, Weave, this one and that one. He didn't give him multiple women to be with. You know, he just gave him, you know, Eve and things like that. And then when they ate of the fruit and, um, sin entered the world and that's when people started like getting multiple you know sex partners concubines multiple wives the multiplicity of you know wives and things like that and that's when all that started and mind you you know it was also part of god's plan too so that he could create and birth nations but then after a while god put a stop to that and you know he's like um yeah these wives got to go too because that's why solomon went crazy and succumbed he eventually succumbed to the will of his wives in the way that um, they wanted him, you know, to, to think and react. And they wanted him to go against the wisdom that God was giving him. You know, that's just Solomon alone. So he's one in the Bible. He know about body count. David knows about body count. And many of these other um, biblical characters. And as a result, they weren't always happy. David had to repent when Nathan came. Nathan the prophet came and confronted him. And I believe it's, um, you know, I'm not going to like quote the scripture, but I think it's Second Samuel that he was confronted by Nathan the prophet about that. And so, um, yeah, you know, this whole body count thing is just not cute. Mary Magdalene, she um, knows about it. You know, she was a woman of the streets, the Bible says, you know, prostitute, you know. But when she saw that Jesus was going to be at a certain place, she went there and she gave of herself to him. You know, she came in with the perfume. She came in with the, um, you know, ready to, um, you know, meet his needs, you know, in the spirit and, you know, worship him and have true repentant worship. And she did. And she changed her life around and followed Jesus ever since. And, you know, knew how to sit at his feet because, you know, she served men in one way. And some of that service, you know, helped her to know how to serve the Lord intimately, but not, you know, from a sexual stance, but instead intimately. And, you know, going to a deep place of worship. So, you know, Bible, you know, the Bible characters, you know, know about it. I may not know about it too much experientially, you know, as far as body count. But that one experience was enough for me with that, you know, gentleman and stuff, you know. Well, we have more than one experience, but still, that was enough for me with that gentleman. You know, that one person that I was with, that was enough for me. Because, you know, people, they carry spirits and all of that kind of stuff, too. So, yeah, like I said, that was enough for me. And, you know, it's funny how I brought up the Bible characters. I wasn't even thinking about that, but I just love how the Holy Spirit will speak and just lead. But, you know, it's just, a, you know, I'm not going to let this video be too long, but it's something I'm not for. I'm against it. You know, people just don't want to, they just want to excuse the sin and just say, well, at least I know what I'm doing. At least I know what to do with this one or that one. At least I'll know what to do with my future husband. It's like, no, you won't know what to do because you have to learn him. You won't know what to do with your future wife because you're going to have to learn her and come together with her and, you know, build up that relationship in your marriage and see, okay, what pleases her, what pleases him, you know, in particular. And it's not about the people that you've done with in the past. Your alliance with them is over. And so you need to figure out, you know, what's going to work on your spouse and your spouse may not be all that freaky like the other ones were, you know, maybe they're just basic and they want love and attention and, you know, you be compassion, being compassionate with them, you know, during, you know, sexual intercourse within your marriage. And so that's just something to consider and think about, you know, all that, you know, crazy experiences and what, you know, work for this person and all that, just not for it. 
and I'm definitely not trying to judge, you know, if you've had a, you got a high body count number, you know, you're able to like turn around and repent, you know, you're able to like change your life. And even though you may have that body count, you can't change that, but you can change what you do now. You can't change the past, but you can change what you do now if you truly want to change and nobody should even like judge you for that and stuff. And after you um, made a turnaround, just ask God for healing because body count affects more. Than, it's just more than just a number that gives you a certain sexual experience, you know, that you think you should be proud of. But it also, you know, it just comes in marriage affects you as far as comparison and pride and things that you got to break down when you get, you know, married to somebody. And, you know, it's just a lot of soul ties and hurt that you feel deep inside and you wonder why you're like going to therapy and you're, you're crazy and you're not all like you should be because all these soul ties, the spirit is, spirits of many people that you have been with intimately is within you and you got to ask God to cast all that out and heal you and things like that. Like I said, I was one person and I had to ask God to really heal me and, you know, take that away from me as far as that heartbreak and, you know, he did. He did. It took a while and things like that because, you know, like I said, some of it, you know, I was holding on to the hurt. But, you know, God is able to heal. He healed me. And I ain't been this, I've been free for like, you know, five years away from that, you know, five years away from that hurt. But three years prior to that, you know, it was heartbreak, you know, because I was been done with this gentleman for like, what, eight years now, you know, eight years and stuff. And then it took, you know, three years. You know, I was done with him eight years ago, 2015. Then 2018, I got over the heartbreak. You know, God allowed me to just get set free and break free from it. That's why I said it was like three years getting over the heartbreak. So I've been free from the heartbreak for five years, but free from him. You know, I haven't seen him, you know, in person for like eight years. So that's, you know, a good thing. And you can have the same story, you know, brother, sister, you can have the same story. But, you know, you got to want it and you got to, um, and you see, this is not a popular subject to talk about because it's speaking against, you know, sin, speaking against, you know, the very thing that God doesn't want. And that's all fornication and, you know, being with people and, and things like that. And that's why you really don't, even as a Christian, you don't really need to be dating either, you know, you know, that too, because things can just start happening and, you know, you don't want to entertain all these people and spirits because not everybody deserves to sit at a table with you and, you know, dine with you. You know, you deserve the very best. And so I kind of repeat myself. So I'm going to go ahead into scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 6. And Yeah, this is about eight verses long. It's going to be a little a bit of a long read, but I don't really care. I'm going to go ahead into it. Paul talks about, sex, you know, staying away from sexual sin. First Corinthians 6, verses 12 through 20, I'll just read. You know, just bear with me. I'm going to try to read as quickly as I can. Okay, verse 12. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. You say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord. And the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead, uh, raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. All right, verse 15. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say the two are united into one. This is where the soul ties come in. You become one flesh and one soul. One flesh. And because you're becoming one flesh, that soul tie starts. And you become that one spirit, which is where the soul tie, you know, forms and ties you up in the knots and you know you think why am I acting like this person why am I emulating this person and 
certain ways because that soul tie came in and then sex is powerful it's you know not just a physical act but it's also spiritual you know finding yourself acting like the person in certain ways and picking up certain things and that's where you know demons come in you know talk more on it after i'm finished reading okay verse 17 but the person who is joined to the lord is one spirit with him run from sexual sin so get your Adidas on and run. Don't walk. Don't try to say, well, maybe we can. Just run. It's, it's good for all of us. Just run. Verse 18, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you? And that's where the soul tie comes in. Okay, it's a sin against the God, you know, who loves us so dearly and fills our bodies with themselves and his love for us. And so it's a sin against him, but it's also a sin against ourselves, which where I said soul ties come in and affect you. And not only that, but, you know, it's just STDs all over. Sexual transmitted, sexually transmitted diseases physically and sexually transmitted diseases spiritually, which is a spiritually transmitted disease. So it's STD nation when it comes to um, sexual immorality and promiscuity that Paul is speaking against. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You did not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. He brought us with a price, y'all. So you must honor God with your body. And it's a hard thing because it's just human it's just human nature. That's first Corinthians six verses twelve through twenty, the NLT version I was reading from. So New Living Translation. If you were wondering, you know, where I was reading from, it wasn't KJV this time, NLT. So, yeah, you know, we were bought with the price. I don't know what the price tag is, but it was a big price when Jesus died on the cross for us. And he didn't die on the cross for us just to, you know, have the life where we just sloppily do whatever and don't, you know, don't care, no conviction. He hasn't called us to that. He loves us too much and he wants to fill us with, he wants to fill our body and our heart and our soul and our mind with his love. He wants us to have a soul tie and a spirit tie with him and be close to him and just allow ourselves to, um, you know, be with him, you know, intimately in the spiritual way. And, you know, just allow him to fill those voids within us so that we don't have to look for it and, you know, people because sexual, you know, you know, promiscuity, that's dependent on, that's another form of dependent on people too. That's another form of you depending on, you know, this person or this experience to um, make you feel good and make you feel like you're somebody because, you know, of all, you know, <laughs> you know, the sexual tricks that you learn and are doing. And so I'm just going to end this video I know it's a touchy subject, but I'm going to go ahead and pray before I get off of here. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for the fact that healing is possible and that healing is available. No judgment, Lord, no judgment. This is a touchy subject. It's a taboo subject, especially of modern day, but it's one that people can be healed from because we speak against sin, Lord. We don't hold it up. We don't try to excuse it. And no, we just, you know, you told me to just, you know, speak against it. You know, you're telling us to speak against these things. Just because it's in the media and it's popular, don't make it right. And you know what, God, bless those who are watching personally who've had an experience and let them, you know, see that, you know, you are the God that heals. You are the God that fills up, you know, voids and give people love. You know, heal those, Lord, who have had, you know, body count. Heal people from the spirit of comparison. Heal people from soul ties. Untie the souls from, you know, people's, you know, souls that they have let in, you know, illicitly. And Lord, when those, you know, when we get married, let us, you know, have that good sexual experience with our spouse that you, you know, so want us to have. Heal us in our singleness. Heal those who are, you know, single and not married yet, you know, such as myself. You know, heal those who are even married and need healing and need to forget the past and really leave the past behind, as Paul said. You know, just bring healing. That's all I'm praying, Lord, is just healing. You know, don't we don't need to hold up the whole body count thing. It's wrong. That's what the world says. That's the world. That's what the world does. Your word speaks against that. Because we are supposed to only be with one person. 
you know, for, you know, the rest of our lives. And some of us have failed. I've failed. And, you know, just many of us have failed your know, command in that way. But Lord, you were able to bring healing. You brought healing to me. So bring healing to my brothers and my sisters and let it, you know, just continue to um, wrap your arms around us and show us what real love is and what it looks like and show us intimacy because intimacy itself cannot be prostituted, you know, sexual immorality in the body that can be prostituted but not intimacy because intimacy is something that you know takes more responsibility and maturity so show us intimacy lord so that when we get married we know how to be intimate not only sexually but also affectionately and you know and just in other ways being truthful and honest so just bring healing lord let your intimate arms of love just wrap around us and hold us and hug us and let us know that, you know, real love come from you, comes from you. And we don't have to be on these like dating websites, Tinder, or whatever, or, you know, social media trying to seek people, you know, but instead our real love comes from you and that only you can do the impossible and send us the love that we, you know, want to find a connection as far as marriage and things like that, you know, send the love to us so that we're able to, you know, do it the way that you want, because only your way is best. And each time that we go against your way and your will, we will be slapped down. I was slapped down, and we are all going to have that, you know, period where we'll be, where we're, we're going to be humbled, and we're going to um, learn lessons, and, you know, just bring healing, Lord. I just pray nothing but healing for, you know, all of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, um, I know this is a touchy taboo subject, you know, I tried my best to, you know, be honest and real about my own self and just, you know, the subject of it, period, which is, you know, you know, it's popular in this world today, but everything popular ain't right. You want to stay biblically grounded, especially if you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ and you're a Christian. And even if you're not a Christian, if you're looking at this video, it's something to think about just for your own self. You know, it's about self-esteem and self-worth. And if you say you love yourself, then you won't just give yourself to any old body and just think, oh, well, it's okay, it's cool, it's not cool. Boo body counting, it's not cute, you know. Just because you have all that experience doesn't mean that you're experienced on this person who may need something different and may need something intimate, you know. And instead, people, like, they get so caught up with, oh, I know how to do the sex thing, but you don't know how to be intimate. You don't even know how to share yourself personally with somebody and, you know, look people in the eye when you talk to them and all this, but yet you'll be the biggest freak in the world. You know how to give yourself in the bedroom, you know, but you don't know how to give yourself personally. And I see that a lot with people, you know, they don't know how to give themselves personally, but, you know, anything freaky, you know, they're right there with it. And there's where you have to come to love yourself and know who you are and love who you are, the God, the person that God has made you to be. And so get comfortable trying to get to know yourself and ask God to show you who you are. Read out the bad about yourself. Be the best version of yourself. Don't be the best version of nobody else. Be the best version of you. And, you know, you'll make it in life. But you got to love you and get to know you personally and intimately and be honest with yourself so that you can therefore share that with others and, you know, make a difference in this world. Uh, all right. Well, I love you guys. Be blessed and be encouraged in Jesus' name. I hope this will bless and help somebody out there, you know. Just know that body count ain't cute. And if even if you have a high body count number, it don't matter what it is. You can always change and repent. You know, I don't believe in this once a hoe, always a hoe. Mm -mm. Anybody can change. Man, woman, you know, boy or girl, you know, you can change. And ask God to just go down deep into those roots where, to start, where it started and just heal your heart. He can and he will because he did it for me. I love you guys. Be blessed and be encouraged in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day.